federal and local law enforcement conduct sex offender compliance checks in Whitley, Laurel, and Pulaski counties. A report of a frightening scene on the side of a central Kentucky road ends with a mother in jail and a baby taken to the hospital. We're tracking the investigation from Frankfurt. An Eastern Kentucky official goes before a judge accused of numerous offenses, including wanton endangerment and harassment. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. Good afternoon. It is slow going at Bluegrass Airport right now. Some flights have been delayed and some even canceled after a small plane made a rough landing on the main runway. The plane landed around 3.15 this afternoon without its landing gear down. An airport spokesperson says the pilot was the only one on board and was not injured, but the main runway was closed for an investigation. Eight flights have been delayed, three canceled. We're told the plane is in the process of being towed away and the runway at Bluegrass Airport should reopen at any time. As we get more information, we'll update that yes. story. It is being called a success, Operation High Maintenance. U.S. Marshals and other law enforcement officers spent time today tracking down more than 200 sex offenders in southern Kentucky to make sure they're following the law. Today, the Marshals released results from the operation. As WKYT Sam Smith reports in our top story at five, all but one was accounted for. Three counties were covered in two days by U.S. Marshals and local law enforcement to make sure registered sex offenders are following the rules. Well, it's part of their sentence, for one thing. And another, it uh, tells the public we have still have an interest in keeping the tabs on these individuals. 222 sex offenders in Whitley, Laurel, and Pulaski counties were contacted. Officials checked to see if they were living at their registered addresses. We have a few sex offenders who uh, say they're living at one place and actually register at another place, and that's no good. Investigators also checked to see if the offenders were off social media and weren't living too close to a school. Sheriff Colin Harrell says they were all accounted for, with one exception. Well, in other words, we can't find them. James Jason Willis of Williamsburg is wanted for failure to comply with sex offender registration. He's on the registry for sexually abusing a four-year-old. Five offenders were charged so far following the initiative. Three for non-compliance, one for probation violation, and one for flagrant non-support. It's kind of a relief for people to know that law enforcement cares. In Whitley County, Sam Smith, WKYT. There are 18 active sex offender cases U.S. Marshals are working on. Investigators need to prove the offenders are not in compliance. A Franklin County mother is facing a long list of charges today after deputies say they found her high on drugs on the side of the road with her infant son. The sheriff's office says they found the 30 year old woman early this morning along Highway 151. Her car had been broken down. Deputies say she had heroin, pain pills, and even marijuana hidden in her bra when they arrested her. Our Garrett Weimer is tracking the case in a story that's new at 5. Investigators say it happened here along Kentucky 151 around 1 o'clock in the morning when dispatchers got a call that a mother standing here on the side of the road had dropped her baby. When sheriff's deputies got here on Kentucky 151 underneath I-64, they say they found a car that had broken down. Paramedics took care of the baby, while deputies believe they discovered the mother was under the influence of drugs. After searching the car, deputies say they found two Suboxone, half a Xanax, and heroin residue in the woman's wallet. Deputies then arrested Shaniqua Chandler, and after noticing her reach toward her bra several times on the way to jail, also found a bag of marijuana tucked inside her bra. Well, the, the child that we're talking about here is a six-month-old infant uh, who doesn't have a choice. And, uh, you know, obviously mom had made some really, really, really bad choices. Sheriff Melton says the child's father was also called to the scene here. And once he got here, he told investigators he would take the baby to the hospital to be checked out. In Franklin County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Chandler faces several drug charges as well as public intoxication and endangering the welfare of a minor. She's being held at the Franklin County Regional Jail. 
Another hot and humid day, and just within the past few minutes, Lexington has hit 90 for the first time this year. The humidity will be sticking around for a while. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking the temperatures in the First Alert Weather Center. Chris, Lexington finally made it. Yeah, time to pop open a water bottle, throw it up in the air, and celebrate. Uh, those temperatures across the board this afternoon, upper 80s to right around 90 degrees. Lexington had dropped the last hour. The little cloud cover, we've bounced it back up to 89 as of right now. Look at the numbers throughout central and eastern Kentucky, and uh, most thermometers have dropped a couple of degrees because now other areas are starting to pick up on some clouds. We've dropped two degrees in Frankfort because of some clouds. Down to 86 right now in Mount Sterling, 88 London and Somerset, mainly upper 80s for areas along and east of Interstate 75 for the better part of the afternoon. Throw the humidity into the mix, you get a heat index, and the heat index really not that great today compared to what the actual thermometer is reading. Live first alert defender. Spotty shower and thunderstorm action trying to pop across parts of central Kentucky. You got to squint, but you can pick up one little teeny tiny raindrop just to the northwest of Paris there into Bourbon County, and that is a sign of things to come. We see moisture that is actually increasing from the volunteer state of Tennessee. When I come back in just a few minutes, we'll talk about how the juice into Tennessee does impact your weekend forecast, guys. Thanks, Chris. An elected official in eastern Kentucky went before a judge today. Perry County Clerk Haven King is charged with harassment, wanton endangerment, official misconduct, and several other charges after an incident that was caught on cell phone in April. A college student claims that King followed her and harassed her about a handicapped license plate on her car that she was driving. As WKYT's Phil Pendleton reports from Hazard, King's attorney says the not guilty plea entered today was more than just a formality. It only lasted a few moments. Haven King making a brief appearance before a judge today and pleading not guilty to the multi count indictment. That is not just a formality as to the charges in the indictment. Uh, he is not guilty of those charges. James Hampton says he is very aware of the videotape that shows his client, Haven King, talked to a young woman after she pulled into the Hazard Community College and Tech School campus. On the tape, you can hear the man identifying himself as the Perry County clerk question why she's driving a car with a handicap plate and telling her she's not allowed to do that. He also tells her that he ran her plates. The victim claims King followed her and once even pulled in front of her. Her attorney says she was accosted and was very scared. King blocked her in. King isn't talking about the allegations, but his attorney says while what he did may not have been appropriate, it was not illegal. He had extended an apology to her. It's, 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 I guess to put it politely, it's not the most gentlemanly conduct, but we're going to stamp our position that it doesn't constitute the crimes he's charged with. Now, Terry Jacobs represents the young victim in this case, and he says that at this point, she is not going to be making any public comments, but once the criminal case is over, and before a civil case begins that she may make a statement. In Perry County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. The judge set a jury trial date for January 18th. If King is found guilty of the wanton endangerment charges, he could face five years in prison. A man charged in a deadly shooting this week in Lexington went in front of a judge today. 21-year-old Jermaine Anderson pled not guilty to murder and assault during his arraignment this afternoon. Police say Anderson fired several shots into a car on Whitney Avenue Sunday night, killing Montez Graves and wounding Graves' brother. Police arrested Anderson Sunday night on other charges. Yesterday, they added murder to that list. New details today about an officer involved shooting. Our county by county coverage at five begins in Scott County. A report in the Georgetown News Graphic says a man who was shot by officers last month was armed with a stolen handgun. William Ray McKee was camping in some woods near North Elkhorn Creek when police say he threatened officers with that gun. The officers then shot McKee. McKee is charged with robbing a gas station in Frankfurt. He is also a person of interest in burglaries at several horse farms in Scott County. A response has now been filed in a wrongful death lawsuit in Taylor County. The family of Tony Grider, the firefighter who died after an ice bucket challenge, sued Campbellsville University, Kentucky Utilities, and Pierce Manufacturing. Grider came in contact with a power line while helping the Campbellsville University band take part in an ice bucket challenge last summer. The Central Kentucky News Journal reports that both the school and KU have filed motions asking for the lawsuit to be dismissed, denying any responsibility for the accident. 
Some bird sales have been banned in Kentucky in response to an outbreak of the avian flu. The state veterinarian has banned the sale of birds at flea markets and swap meets to protect Kentucky's poultry industry. Several other restrictions were also announced today. Private sales with direct farm to farm movement are still allowed. About 50 million birds have been infected with the avian flu in 21 states since December. Two birds have tested positive for the flu in Kentucky.